Hi, it's another video about publish or perish. Um, it's available from harzing.com. It's free. Uh, obviously, you're free to um, contribute towards its upkeep. Um, and I want to show you this is a really useful tool for researchers or anybody interested in research that doesn't have access to the academic subscriptions that you would normally um, need. So I'm going straight. I've installed it. This is installed for Windows. Here's the application. Um, and this is the this is the Windows user interface. The key areas that you're going to see are the terms that I'm searching for. So these are the searches. These are some searches that I've done. And if you can see, every time I click on one of these, the results down in the lower part change. So these are individual papers or research items, published items. Um, and they are the results of different searches. Now I'm going to build up each one of these for you so you can see exactly what I've done. But good practice, I think, is to create a new area to work in, because otherwise everything's just in this global My Searches. So I'm going to create a new folder. We're working today with uh, Paradox, uh, which is something that I, I showed in a previous video. So we're going to work with Paradox. And you can see there are no searches. So I'm going to click on the first search. And I'm going to I'm going to choose uh, for most of these I'm going to be using Google Scholar. Google Scholar it's got a single asterisk. It's a free data source. You don't need to register. And in fact, it's one of the the most um, inclusive uh, data sources. Albeit some of the results are not quite as you know high quality. They're not all peer reviewed. So you might have to be a bit selective. The the other thing to notice is that. Google Scholar brings you back a thousand records, which is far too many for our purposes. Um, if you think that each one is a research um, contribution that you're going to have to look through, so 20 is more than enough. So we're going to look at Paradox, like I said, and I'm just going to start out nothing other than go ask Google Scholar for Paradox. We always do search. Search pulls the results out of the um, publish or perish uh, data cache rather than going off directly. So it's always going to be quicker. And the cache is, is, um, is refreshed very frequently. So we can see the results. So the first, these are 20 results. Um, it's ranked uh, in an order that is based on, um, I believe, it's based on a combination of what um, the data source tells us is the rank. But importantly, we get the citation statistics here. So this one, for instance, this is a 2021 paper. And it's had already in its first year, it's, it's already had 910 citations. So the citations per year is the same. Here's one. Let's see what year. This is 1992. OK, so it's had 26 per year, right, which is a total of 800. And you can see, you know, some of these results are old, uh, even old by, by my standards of being old. Um, now, all these are a search results. And over on the right, you can see the paper details. All right. Now, for all of these, you can go and ask the uh, you can ask the software to go and find the article in the browser, which it will do if it's able to. And then the ordinary rules for whether or not you can download it or see it, they, um, you know, that, that that's in force. So a lot of them these days are, of course, um, freely available. So you'll be able to find it. Now, I'm actually interested in organizational paradox. So what I'm going to do, so I'm going to do another search. So we're in my paradox folder. Click on, I click on the next empty line, Google Scholar. Again, I'm going to set that to 20. It's much quicker with a uh, search for 20. So I want to use Paradox. And this time, I'm going to use a keyword and I want keyword and organization. Now, I know there's different ways of spelling organization. So I could say and organization. It's usually in US. It's better if you spell it correctly and hit uh, enter enter is the same as search so let's see now we can compare these results look so paradox um, 
different results, you see. Different, completely different result sets because we're we're getting a more selective search. And I could say here, and I and I want to exclude. I want to say not um, psy, psychology, psychological. It could be so. Psycholog. Let's see. Um, no, let me just click. Make it make that a new one because I want I want to be able to compare these. Bang that in. Um, so if I've said not psychological, psychology, you see we're getting different results again. So we're really narrowing it down. We're really using the power of this engine. Um, something I've just noticed, it's fascinating, is those older results, mostly single authors, and you know, as we get to more, I think more recent results, you know, that they are. Um, there's there's multiple authors now a name that stands out for me just because i'm aware of this paper is this is a seminal paper by um wendy smith um so the next thing that i can do is i can say well i know that's an important paper uh, what else has um, dr smith written so now I'm going to do a different type of search. It's also Google, but it's Google Scholar Profile. And now I need to find that profile. And um, <laughs> good Blue Peter fashion. Here's one I've done early. Let me just let me just pull that out. Let, let's start with. If you didn't know that uh, the lady's name was um, was Wendy, you might start with Smith. Well, there's going to be an awful lot of Smiths in the academic database so it's now trying to pull all of those smiths i'm just going to cancel we've reached 150 and you can see uh, you know I, I have no idea but because i do know that it's wendy i run the search we've got all the wendy smiths and i don't know i don't know which one of these is paradox none of them say paradox however if i look at the number of citations it's a good chance that the Wendy Smith with almost 19,000 citations is the right one. And sure enough, look, there it is. There's that top article. There's that top article. OK, so I've now got um, I've now got all of the output, uh, all of the papers that uh, that Wendy Smith has been involved with. And that can be really useful if, for example, your, your supervisor has said, go look at the research by this specific person. Right. So, and so there it all is. Um, and I think that's I think that's a fairly good I think that's a fairly good demonstration. One more thing I probably should just show you is um, whatever reference manager you're using you will probably want to export from here so you're probably going to save the results and just export it RIS is a very common format into reference managers so that will allow you to put it into a reference manager um, like that so that's probably how you're going to export it but really really powerful tool and the fact that you can save the searches uh, makes it a, a really useful, ongoing, and free, valuable resource. Thanks for watching. Hope it's been a help.